This video is the first of a series of videos which I'm going to make. It's about the HL230 um, cyclonic air filter by Maybach. It was fitted to the uh, water-cooled 60 degree uh, 23 litre V12 petrol engine as used in the Panther and some Tiger variants. Quite a recognisable filter to look at externally. I just thought I would take this opportunity to put some more information out there in the uh, public domain which um, is useful to uh, modelers, military enthusiasts. So we've got two examples here. We'll have a quick look at these and the, um, the internal parts that fit within them and also how they work. Uh, you can get an idea of scale here. This is a one meter steel rule on the bench in front of these. The main um, square compartment in the middle of this filter um, is 420 millimeters across to give an idea of scale and this um, circular aperture is 405 millimeters diameter. So the filter is quite well known. Um, it's uh, quite an advanced uh, design. It's developed to primarily to, to remove a lot of the dust and sand uh, in the air um, before the, the, the air actually gets to the, the final filter stages. You've got these uh, what are known as cyclonic air intakes. Um, basically, the air is drawn in through these scrolls. There's 48 scrolls per filter. And uh, the air is drawn in through here. It swirls because of the action. If we just look inside here, this is where the air is actually drawn into the filter compartments. The air is coming in this direction. And as the air comes in through the scroll, it swirls and the dust is thrown to the outside. And just at the back, you can just about make out there, there's a small rectangular slot. And that is where the dust is actually uh, extracted. It's a combination of centrifugal action, the swirling of the air that throws the dust to the outside of the scroll there. And as it's spinning around, it finds that small rectangular hole, uh, which actually uh, has a separate extraction um, facility on it, so the dust is extracted cleanly away. The air itself is then drawn out of these circular ports, and it then goes onward to the other filter parts. We'll just have a quick look at this uh, more rusty example, which we've sectioned to have a better look at what's going on inside. Apologies for the shaky camera. I'm filming this on my phone. I don't have a proper camcorder, so this is, I'm afraid, the best I can do. You'll have to bear with me. So we've got uh, we've got here one that we've sectioned. If we just take this this outer piece off, firstly, to reveal what's inside. Now there does seem to be quite a lot of incorrect information out there about this filter and how it actually works. Various people saying that. The air flows through these outer sections, or they contain oil. These are not the oil bath. These are purely dust extract. So what you've actually got on the inside here, you can just see each one of these little caps has got that rectangular slot at the bottom. It's only at the bottom facing down on both rows. There's 12 of these each side. If we just take off this piece, we can get a better idea of the section. We'll just point out that the corner inlets actually have a small extension duct on them. Presumably testing by the Germans must have found that uh, the airflow um, wasn't being efficiently uh, drawn through these outer ones, so they just have these little extension tubes on. But the actual scroll assembly is the same in all the others except for this first out external part. So basically, looking at this, the air is coming in through this rectangular aperture there, and again, this aperture here. So the air is coming in from there, 
it's swirling around. As it does so, it swirls around this back face. And there you can just see the start part of the cutout of the slot. If we just remove this next section, you can indeed see the slot there. So the air swirls around, it's extracted through this slot, it then falls down in this hollow cavity which you've got each side and as you can see there's an extract slot in the bottom of the air filter. We'll have a better look at that in a second. So the air then continues its way drawn through this middle portion into the main chamber of the air filter. Once it gets into there, it finds itself uh, being passed through this. This is actually the inner bowl. This sits down inside this unit. This does actually have the oil in the bottom of this compartment here. You can see there is also, well the remains, you can just about make out here, the remains of some small sort of guide vane arrangement around the outside. Again, designed to just help try and throw the air down. It's coming through a relatively small gap here. It's throwing the air down, directing it down towards the oil. And then you've got this, the final stage, which sits. This itself is the uh, traditional wire strainer type filter. And this sits down into that container. And this provides the last stage of the filtration before the air is then drawn out downward centrally through the filter. There's a separate piece here. It's probably better to look at this one. There's a separate piece in the middle. This is actually sprung. It's difficult to move with one hand. But um, this actually uh, is attached via another component to the actual um, inlet of the engine. And as I say, this is sprung. It's got a bellow type arrangement to seal it airtight. You can see the spring there. There we go. So on this shot here, these are the two dust extract slots. So a partial vacuum present on both of these slots, helping to draw dust out of these two chambers. Note just looking at the air filter, I don't know if it's easy to see on the video clip, but you'll notice that the housing has got a slight offset. In fact, the air filter itself isn't symmetrical from left to right. There's a 20 millimeter offset in the middle and correspondingly there's a 20 millimeter offset in the width of these dust chambers. Typically over complicated German engineering. This chamber is a nominal 70 millimeters wide. This chamber is a nominal 50 millimeters wide. So the angles of these faces and the shape of this end section differ accordingly. So these sections left to right are different. So hopefully this just puts a bit more information out there. There's not obviously too many of these examples around. Even less I should imagine that actually allow you to see a cross section through the filter. This is quite a good example in that respect. And these two uh, are being used to gather information from for the purposes of actually remanufacturing this part which we're well underway with. There'll be some separate videos posted shortly showing various stages of all the components being manufactured. So we're making two complete units from fresh material. As I say, I shall post some videos of that shortly. So hopefully this has been of interest. Apologies for any shaky camera work.
Let's see it for this video.